Hello and welcome to where we will be discussing inequalities. Before we get started, we'd like to listen to a small portion of this talk by President Uchtdorf, given in a talk called Continue in Patience. This will be a great way to uh, start off our lesson and also teach us some important things about, about life. Let's take a look. Let's take a listen. In the 1960s, a professor at Stanford University began a modest experiment testing the willpower of four-year-old children. He placed before them a large marshmallow and then told them they could eat it right away or if they waited for 15 minutes or so, they could have two marshmallows. He then left the children alone and watched what happened behind a two-way mirror. Some of the children ate the marshmallow immediately. Some could wait only a few minutes before giving in to temptation. Only 30% were able to wait. It was a mildly interesting experiment and the professor moved on to other areas of research for, in his own words, there are only so many things you can do with kids trying not to eat marshmallows. But it, as the time went on, he kept track of the children and began to notice an interesting correlation. The children who could not wait struggled later in life and had more behavioral problems, while those who waited tended to be more positive and better motivated, had higher grades and incomes, and had healthier relationships. What started as a simple experiment with children and marshmallows became a landmark study suggesting that the ability to wait, to be patient, was a key character trait that might predict later success in life. Let me share that with you. It's, it's this, this idea of delayed gratification is a real important principle and of, of, of patience um, as well. Um, this can apply in multiple things. Uh, the, this study talked about finances. Um, these people were, those people that can wait, if you can wait, uh, you stay out of debt and you'll be more successful uh, in your future finances. It works with education. Uh, notice that he says they're, they get higher grades and they're better motivated because they are able to put the work in. Um, a lot of people want to just learn math, um, but it, you know, it, have it poured into their heads, but uh, unfortunately that, that's not possible. Uh, you gotta work hard and uh, this idea of patience uh, again, is is one of those character traits. I love how he said it's a character trait that might predict later success in life. So if that's something you can learn, it's super important. It was evident already in, in four-year-old kids. Okay, now you might say, now where's the math involved here? Um, well, what we want to talk about today is inequalities. And with inequalities, Inequalities are a way to represent a large number of solutions. Up till now, we've been solving problems that have one exact solution. Uh, X equals seven, or four hours, or seven dollars. But there are certain problems that require, that, that actually have multiple solutions. For example, if I were to ask you, who were the people that got one marshmallow? Well, if this represented the minutes uh, of the experiment, if a kid waited two minutes, well, and then ate the marshmallow, well, he's only getting one marshmallow. If he waited six minutes, well, that person's only getting one marshmallow. And so all of a sudden we realize that there's a lot of solutions to this question. How many minutes did they wait? If they waited 14.9 minutes, well, they only got one marshmallow uh, because they, they ate it. They had to wait until 15 minutes. And so one way we do this is by representing the problem with an inequality. Um, using an inequality is a way to represent multiple solutions uh, of a problem. And so for here, if we were to say time, if time was less than 15 minutes, if time was less than 15 minutes, that th that would be the people that got one marshmallow. Uh, one way to graph this, again, is to use uh, an inequality line. And what we do is we would use uh, 
because every solution is possible all the way up to 15, we use a line and we shade to the correct direction. Now, when it's not equal to, we use what is called an open dot. There's my open dot. Um, because it can't be equal to 15. So here are some uh, additional examples. Uh, we'll go ahead and graph these. Here we have the solution x is greater than 5. So because it's greater than, we're going to go ahead and put an open dot. It can't be 5. It says it's greater than 5. And so we then shade to the right. Here we have x is less than or equal to 2. Now because it can be equal, we use a closed dot. And we're going to shade to the less than area, which would be shading to the left. Here we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Do we use a closed dot or open dot? Oh, hopefully you said closed dot. That would be correct, because it is equal to. And then we shade to the right, because we want all solutions that are greater than negative 3. So again, it's, it's important to remember that all inequalities can be represented uh, graphically. Now we can write them as an equation, or you can write them as a graph, but they mean the exact same thing. These are just different expressions that we can use mathematically to show uh, this same representation. Again, here we have an equation, and here we have a graph. There's another type of uh, inequality as well. And this is one that is bounded both by a lower bound and an upper bound as well. For example, what if we were going to uh, the fair and we came up to a Ferris wheel and the sign said you have to be five years of age to ride this, but you cannot exceed the age of 18. Hmm. Now graphically, that would look like this. Okay, You could be five years old or you could be 18. So you could be five. You have to be at least five years old to ride. And so all of these inside values would work. So anywhere between five all the way to 18. This type of inequality is called an and inequality. And the way we write these is we write the lower bound, which is five. We write the upper bound, which is 18. We use the variable. I'm going to use a to represent age. And then we use the less than signs to trap the a in. And so basically, this is saying that 5 is less than or equal to a, which makes sense. And this is saying that a is also less than 18, which is true. a is greater than 5 and less than 18. And so that is the way we write the inequality for this Ferris wheel age problem. OK, so now it's your turn. Take out your video notebook. Here I have given you four inequalities. What we'd like you to do is write these inequalities down in your notebook, and then graph their, the graphical representation of each of these inequalities. When you're ready to check your answer, go ahead and press the play button. OK, so how'd you do? Hopefully you drew a line with a 3. And uh, because it's less than and not equal to, we would use an open dot, and we would shade to the left. OK, for this next one, we would draw a line. We'd go ahead and graph the number 4. Did you use an open dot or a closed dot here? Hopefully you use a closed dot, because it can equal 4. Because it's equal to, it can equal 4. And we shade to the right. OK, great. Next thing is an and inequality, where we're going to need to put negative 2 and 5 somewhere in here is 0 and if you went ahead and uh, wrote them all out that's fine uh, you don't have to um, but notice that we would put a lower bound at negative 2 an upper bound at 5 and we would graph the values in between last of all is this one here x is less than or equal to 0 so here's 0 we would put a closed dot at 0, because it's equal to, and shade to the left. A couple other things we want to remember is that all inequalities can be flipped. So if I had x is greater than 5, uh, we can flip these inequalities uh, to make it 5 
is less than x. But remember that when you flip inequalities, you have to flip the sign. So notice on this one, we had x is greater than 5. I, I switched the 5 and the x. They went to different places. And then I changed the sign, the direction of the inequality. Here's another one. What if I had uh, 7 is greater than or equal to t? So to flip that one, we would switch the t and the 7 and their locations. And then remember to flip the inequality. So all inequalities can be flipped. OK, so uh, we can also work with inequalities and work for solving for variables. It, the, the rules are exactly the same for regular equations. We're going to use the law of opposition to solve. So uh, let's review that. For this problem here, we would subtract 1 to both sides, leaving us with 3x equals 7 minus 1, which is 6. We then undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 3. Then we get x equals 2. Now when dealing with inequalities, we do exactly the same thing. We minus the 1 to both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. And then we divide by 3, giving us x is less than 2. And so solving for equalities and inequalities is the same, except for one big thing. So the big difference between equalities and inequalities when we solve for a variable is that, and this is a big warning sign, warning, warning, you must flip the inequality when multiplying or dividing by a negative. Let me show you why. If I were to give you uh, 3 is less than 5, you would all agree with me that 3 is less than 5. Well, one of the things that we said we can do when dealing with equalities is that we can multiply both sides by a number. For example, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equality by negative 1. When doing that, I get negative 3 equals negative 3. That's fine. There's no issue there. But look at this. If I were to multiply the inequality both sides by negative 1, I'd get negative 3 is less than negative 5. But that's not correct. Negative 3 is not less than negative 5. In fact, negative 5 is less than negative 3. So this is an issue. Uh, we can't do this. And so what we need to remember, remind ourselves is, uh, of, uh, we need to remind ourselves of this rule right here, that when you multiply or divide by a negative, you've got to flip the sign. You flip the sign. Okay. Uh, let's do an example. We'll show you kind of how that works. OK, so here's a problem that we can work on. Here in this problem, we need to solve for x. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, go ahead and get rid of the parentheses by distributing the negative 5 into both of these, uh, into the parentheses. That gives us 3x minus 5x minus 10. Don't forget to distribute the negative. Is greater than or equal to 8. We then can subtract the x's. 3x minus 5x is negative 2x minus 10 is greater than 8. So again, I just combined the like terms there. Now we need to get rid of negative 10. To undo a negative 10, we apply the law of opposites and add 10 to both sides, leaving us with negative 2. x is greater than 18. Now the last step here, then, is to divide by negative 2. However, big warning signs should flash. Whoop, whoop. Warning, remember, when we multiply or divide, by a negative number, you've got to flip the sign. So our final answer then is x is less than, I switch the sign, 18 divided by negative 2 is negative 9. And of course, uh, if you were asked to, you could graph this solution by putting negative 9. We would use uh, an open dot, because it's not equal to. And we go the direction uh, that it's pointing. It's less than, so we shade to the less than. OK, so it's your turn. Take out your video notebook. Here's two problems to work on with inequalities. Solve the inequalities. And then go ahead and press the play button when you're ready to resume to check your answer. OK, let's get going. 5x minus 7x. We combine the like terms. 5x's minus 7x's leaves us with negative 2x's. Plus 8 is less than 10. We're going to go ahead and subtract 8 to both sides. I'm left with negative 2x is less than or equal to 2. Our last step then is to divide by 2. 
uh, divide by negative 2. And when I divide by negative 2, don't forget to flip your sign. Our answer should be x is greater than or equal to 1. On question number 2, we would distribute the 4 into the parentheses. That gives us 8y minus 12 is greater than 28. To undo the negative 12, we would add 12 to both sides. I'm left with 8y is greater than 40. I then divide both sides by 8, and I'm left with y is greater than 5. Now, some of you may be asking, whoa, do we need to flip the sign? And you should say, no, there's no sign flippage, because we only flip signs when multiplying by negative numbers. Well, that's the lesson. Uh, again, you'll, you're just going to work uh, on solving these inequalities. You might be asked to graph them as well and using uh, the law of opposition to solve. Just don't forget that when multiplying or dividing by a negative, you need to flip your inequality. Thanks for watching, and don't eat the marshmallow. <laughs> Have a great day.